Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Ah, the age-old saga of the perfect relationship hitting the iceberg of infidelity. But alas, even the most fairy tale esque marriages can crash and burn. Today on our space, there aren't enough lifeboats for us all. My wife admitted to having a drunken one-night stand last week, and it has turned me into a robot. I, 32 male, have been married to my wife, Kate, 30 female, for four years, together for nine. Our relationship has been amazing, loving, and supportive. We have good communication, hardly ever argue, and our bedroom life has gone from strength to strength over the years. We have discussed cheating in the past, and I was always clear that we would be over if it ever happened. Kate went home to visit her family last weekend, which was fairly normal. Before she left on the Friday night, we had a minor argument about keeping the house tidy, so our communication was limited on Saturday. But I knew she was going out to meet some friends at a bar. I trusted her 100%, so didn't think anything of it. Before I fell asleep, I texted her saying that I hoped she had a nice night. When I woke up on Sunday morning, I had a missed call from Kate at 4am, so I immediately called her to check if she was okay, but no answer. After a few hours, I tried again a few times, but still no answer. Around an hour later, I got a message saying she was fine and was driving back soon. Kate got home late afternoon and looked awful. She had clearly been crying, was not wearing any makeup, unusual for her, and looked like a shell of a person. I knew right away something was wrong, but she wouldn't let me hug her and would barely speak. I sat her down on the couch and made her some tea. I gently encouraged her to tell me what was wrong and she burst into uncontrollable tears for at least 10 minutes while I was trying to comfort her. She then proceeded to tell me, stopping every few words, that she had slept with someone last night after the bar. At that moment, something in my brain broke. I can't describe it in any other way. I immediately got up and jumped in my car and drove off. I went to a park and walked around it for about an hour. Kate was calling my phone constantly and I turned it off. When I got home, I grabbed two suitcases from the garage and went to our bedroom. I threw some of Kate's clothes and shoes into them and left them by the front door. Kate was lying on the floor in the living room, curled up into a ball, sobbing. I called her best friend who lives nearby and told her that Kate needed a place to stay and a ride to her place and that Kate could explain everything to her later. I told Kate I was leaving for an hour and that her friend was coming to pick her up. She grabbed onto my legs trying to stop me from leaving. When I returned home again, she was gone. So were the cases. On Monday, with a clearer head, I answered one of Kate's many calls and told her that I needed her to send me an email with as much details as possible of that night, and if she leaves anything out, there will be no hope of reconciliation. I received this email on Monday night, but still haven't opened it. Since then, everyone has been trying to contact me, but I have just been working, exercising, and sleeping. One of her friends turned up at my house with an attitude demanding an explanation. I told her to speak to Kate and close the door in her face. I have also been speaking to divorce lawyers, have moved money into separate accounts, and blocked Kate and all of her friends on everything. Everything I have done since I found out seems like I have been on autopilot. I don't feel angry, upset, or overly emotional, just numb. Kate posted a note through the door yesterday asking me to meet tomorrow, but I'm conflicted. Should I meet her? Will it change anything? Is there any point in trying to reconcile? Is it normal to feel like a robot, and how do I snap out of this? Edit. Just to add that when I came home the first time, Kate confirmed it was consensual. She was drunk, but knew what she was doing. These are some million dollar questions, OP. Will this meeting be the magical band-aid that fixes everything? Probably not. It might give you some answers, or it might just leave you with more questions. Meet her if you need to, but brace yourself for the emotional equivalent of a hurricane. Change is possible, but don't bank on a miracle. Update. Kate came to the house yesterday, and when I opened the door, she looked terrible. She tried to hug me and started mumbling apologies, but I stopped her and we sat down to talk. I started by telling Kate that I would be recording the audio of the conversation and she agreed. I then asked her to explain what happened and I told her that I haven't read the email she sent. Kate said she had been at the bar with two friends. I know and like both of them. It told me what she had to drink. I was surprised at how little she drank because it was the same amount we would normally drink when going to dinner. A few glasses of wine and a cocktail. She admitted she was only slightly tipsy. One of her friends, Sarah, has a younger brother, Max, 27 male, who came to pick them up around midnight. It's a running joke in their group that Max has had a minor crush on Kate since high school, and I had heard them joke about this. The four of them went to get some food, and Max then dropped each one of them off until it was just him and Kate. Kate said she didn't want him to drive the 20 minutes to her parents' place, 
after working all day, so she would just order an Uber from his apartment. She went into his apartment to order the Uber, but couldn't get one. Max suggested she could crash in his bed and he would take the sofa. He would then drop her off in the morning. Kay refused and continued to try to find an Uber. They were sitting on Max's bed and he kissed her. She kissed him back and they ended up having sex. After that, she broke down crying from guilt and Max took her home. She cried for another hour, then tried to call me to tell me what she had done. We had to stop a number of times because Kate kept breaking down and crying hysterically. She told me it was a huge mistake. She got caught up in the moment. It was terrible. She only loves me, blah, blah, blah. After she was done, I told her that her story didn't make sense, but it didn't matter at this stage because I was done. This caused another breakdown. I told her I was going to continue with the divorce preparations, but for the next month, we would be separated with no contact. I also told her that we would both remain faithful, we would get a full STD panel, and she would tell our mutual friends and family what happened. If she sticks to these conditions, I would be willing to meet again to see if there was any way forward other than divorce. She enthusiastically agreed to this, but made it clear that she did not expect me to stay faithful to her. I know many of you will criticize this decision, but I need to be sure that divorce is the right option after I have had the time to process everything that has happened. I am still 99% sure that is where we are heading, but I need to be 100% certain. Nothing says intimate heart to heart like a legal record. You're playing the long game here, OP. Your wife sure didn't take that long to decide to cheat on you. Update 2. A few things have happened in the last week, so I thought I would make an update post if anyone is interested. First of all, I'm not in robot mode anymore. Have been having bursts of intense feelings of anger and betrayal, but have been keeping busy with work and exercise. My friends have also been great since they found out and have been dragging me out of the house to hang out. I decided to read the email and wish I hadn't. The story Kate told in the email was mostly the same, but there was no mention of going into Max's apartment in order to get an Uber. There were also pretty explicit details of what they did, for how long, and that they had apparently used a condom. I will never be able to forget that description. Many people who were originally criticizing me for kicking Kate out of the house have now apologized, but they can keep it. Kate's parents reached out to apologize and I spoke to them because we had a good relationship before all of this. They begged me to try to work it out, but said they understood if I decided to get divorced. I didn't commit to either option. Kate's other friend that was there that night contacted me to tell me her side of the story. It mostly matched up. Bar food home. She said Kate could stay over at her house, but she refused, saying she was driving home early the next morning. Max apparently insisted that he would take Kate home. The version of the story that she told didn't mention Kate trying to get an Uber, only that Max invited her in and she accepted. I asked her if she had ever suspected anything before and she told me that about a year ago she went to meet Kate for coffee but found Max sitting with her when she arrived. Apparently Kate looked guilty but when asked about it she said they just met by chance. Sarah, Max's sister, also reached out to me and I spoke to her too. She is angry with both Max and Kate and told me a similar story. Apparently her whole family are angry with Max and she had not spoken to Kate since she found out. She apologized on behalf of her idiot brother and said she had warned him to stay away from Kate since high school. She didn't think anything else had happened between them. I have had zero contact from Kate, but heard that she was going to be moving into an Airbnb near our house. Apparently she is not coping well and called in sick from work a few times over the last few weeks. She does have support from the friend she is currently living with and I asked her parents to keep an eye on her. Her parents came up to see her this past weekend. I went out with some friends at the weekend and ended up drunk at a bar. I was talking to a girl there who I probably could have gone home with, but I stopped myself because I wanted to keep my self-respect. Reading the email and hearing what they had done made me give up hope of repairing this, especially when I know she is not being truthful with me on other things, so who knows? I will be moving ahead with the divorce and might not even wait a month before telling Kate that this is my final decision. Nothing like a good workout to keep you from flipping tables. And oh, that coffee date. Hindsight's always 2020, I guess. Reading that email seems to have been the nail in the coffin and for any hope of reconciliation. Full steam ahead with a divorce. Why wait a month when you can cut the final thread now? Update 3. I debated posting this update, but a lot of people seem to be invested in this mess, so here it is. Apologies in advance as if this is TMI. Kate sent me an email last week asking to pick up some things she needed for work. My lawyer told me not to prevent her from having access to the house or her possessions, so I reluctantly agreed that she could come over on Thursday night when I would be at the gym. I told her to be out by 7.30, but when I got home at 8, she was still there. 
When I walked in, she had left a few work-related items next to the stairs and she was chopping vegetables for dinner. She looked amazing with her hair and makeup done, wearing one of the dresses I like. The whole place had been tidied and cleaned. I calmly asked her to leave immediately and she made her way to the door but stopped and asked if we could speak. I should have said no, but I eventually agreed. We sat down and had a conversation for around an hour, which jumped from topic to topic. Again, I told her I would record the audio and she agreed. I started by asking her if she had kept her side of the agreement we made last time we spoke. She said she had taken an STI test, which was all negative, mine was too thankfully, and a pregnancy test, which was negative. She hadn't been with anyone else and also told a few friends and family what happened and many of them were angry and were not speaking to her. I asked a lot of questions that had been turning over in my mind for the last few weeks. She confirmed that her reason for going into Max's apartment, the Uber story, was BS and she said he invited her in for a drink and she agreed knowing at some level that something was going to happen. She can't explain why she did this other than being selfish and enjoying the attention. She also confirmed that she had texted with Max a few times over the years because he would shower her with compliments and make her feel good. He would always initiate and she was apparently careful not to lead him on and said she had never sent him explicit messages or pictures. Kate also told me that they had hooked up about six months before we got together but never had sex. She admitted that she was always a bit curious. Her story about being caught at the coffee shop was that Max had texted her asking what she was up to and she had told him where she was. He then turned up. She swore this was the first time they had ever done anything since we had been together. She said there was nothing missing in our relationship and she hates herself for ruining her perfect marriage and causing me so much pain. I told her that I still don't believe her story and that there was no point in continuing the conversation. She calmly asked what she would need to do to make this right, offering up her phone, location sharing, not going out without me, etc. She had clearly been doing some research. I said that I had no plans to become her prison guard, especially when I would never get over the betrayal. Things then took an unexpected turn which caught me completely off guard. She asked me to turn off the audio recording because she had something private she wanted to discuss and didn't want other people hearing it. I refused and she reluctantly continued. She asked if I had been involved with anyone else sexually since all of this happened, making it clear she was fine with it. I told her no and she said that I must be going crazy, we used to have sex almost daily, and started talking dirty about all the things I could do with and to her. This involved a lot of kinky things that I had wanted to try and had only done a few times. She said she wanted to meet my needs, even if we did not get back together. She said we could have as many threesomes as I wanted from now on, or we could be open on my side only, and she would even find partners for us and me. She was trying very hard to turn me on, and I stayed silent until she asked who I wanted to have a threesome with. For some reason, I mentioned the name of her coworker who was five years younger than Kate and a total knockout. This surprised her, but she was in too deep and asked me what I wanted to do with her. I went into detail about a pretty hardcore scenario and Kate was encouraging me until I said that she would just be watching. This again caught her off guard, but she went along with it. Later on I realized that I only said all of this as a petty attempt to hurt Kate, which I don't feel good about. She was obviously convinced that her plan was working so she pulled up her dress and got into my favorite position on the couch, begging me to have sex with her. I'll admit that if for a few seconds my body reacted even though my head was not in the game. Everything suddenly came into focus and the content of her email came flooding into my head. I can't explain why, but I started to laugh. Not just a chuckle, but a full on belly laugh. She looked hurt and moved away, then started to cry. I told her it was time for her to go and she left quickly, probably due to the embarrassment. I also said she needed to hurry up and get a lawyer because we were getting divorced. The post nut clarity after she left confirmed that I had dodged a bullet. I have a meeting with my lawyer later this week and wanted to move forward with a divorce as quickly as possible. Well, that certainly left nothing to my imagination. Here's to moving forward, laughing at the absurdity, and leaving behind Kate's too little too late offers in the dust. Onward to a future where your biggest decisions don't involve dodging desperate exes with sex coupons. Cheers! Do you have a similar story? Share it with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time!